Hi, this is Dr. Tom Rogers at Performance Medicine, coming to you with a weekly podcast of the Common Sense MD. I'm excited today because I'm going to talk to you about pearls that I've learned from the recent conference I attended uh, in Florida called the A4M Conference. I've been to this many times. I did my fellowship in functional medicine through A4M. What that stands for is American Academy of Anti-Aging, and it's the most renowned institute of this type in the world so all the experts come out and um, this is one of the bigger meetings that I go to yearly and I learned a lot of stuff um, so I want to just give you some pearls today about uh, what I learned and how to maybe carry it into your own daily lifestyle um, the theme of this year's conference was inflammation why inflammation ages you and what to do about it. You know, inflammation really is the root cause of most every disease. But we had some world-renowned experts in the field there, as usual. Uh, they all agree that inflammation starts in the gut. We talk about gut all the time in my office. Your gut harbors the most complex ecosystem in the world. Your gut is connected to every system in the body. Um, it's the key to your health, really. It's where it, where it starts. Chronic inflammation caused by an immune system in overdrive is the major driver of every disease that we know about. This means that the gut is the biggest source of inflammation in the body, but it's also the gateway for reversing that inflammation. Remember, in functional medicine, we go after the root cause of the disease rather than just treating the symptoms like most traditional medicine tends to do. It used to be the way I did it. We treat this with diet, detoxification, lifestyle changes, mindfulness, um, supplements if needed. You have to learn what you can eat for number one. Everyone's gut's different in the makeup of their microbiome that balance of good and bad bacteria. Food intolerances, sensitivities, intestinal permeability rates. Think about leaky gut. But there are a lot of similarities that um, we have also. Examples include things that we share that are foods that can cause inflammation like glutens, dairy, sugar, beans, GMO soy and corn, vegetable and seed oils, trans fats, and of course stress. You have to think about stress, which can affect anyone's gut system and gut function. Besides avoiding these as much as possible, most of the experts agree that intermittent fasting is good. Consuming more fermented foods is good, way better than more fiber. Um, so fermentation, fermented foods are really good for you, unless you have an extreme histamine intolerance, which we'll talk about at some point. Um, but we should probably all be taking pre and probiotics and digestive enzymes. I talk about that all the time. One thing that made sense to me was that your gut has its own circadian rhythm, um, so you need to eat at the same time of the day. Eat your meals at the same time of the day, preferably two meals a day. Um, if your eating schedule varies from day to day at different times, it messes that rhythm up and leads to a lot of gut dysbiosis. A lot of other pearls that I learned from this, again, I can't go into all of them, but I'm going to get a lot of good podcasts out of this latest meeting. Taste is the greatest determinant of what people eat, taste. It's hard to get them away from things that taste good. So some, some things you can do, besides detoxing from sugar, um, that'll always taste good. You just need to detox and stay away from it for the most part. You need to marinate your meats, grass-fed preferably, or wild-caught fish. Marination is very good for, for your food. It decreases those hydrocarbons by 80% when you grill out those dangerous things for your gut and for your inflammation. Add rosemary 
tremendous thing to add to help to help your inflammation. Cook these following vegetables: carrots, tomatoes, spinach, mushrooms, asparagus, and red bell peppers. You know, remember, a lot of plants don't like to be eaten. Think lectins. They're very hard to digest, especially for most of us. Um, taking just one half tablespoon of olive oil daily, extra virgin, good stuff, decreases all mortality by 19% and dementia by 29%. Just eating two tablespoons of extra virgin olive oil, good tip for that. Eat more walnuts, eat more wild blueberries. Drinking two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar that we talk about a lot will decrease your insulin resistance by about 20% talk about insulin resistance all the time. It was a common theme here as well. And remember, inflammation drives insulin resistance. We treat a lot of obesity. Type 2 diabetes is all insulin resistance. They talked a lot about mitochondrial health that we talk about a lot. The mitochondria are actually the brains of the cells, not the nucleus of the cells, the mitochondria. When you have something called... CIRS that they talked a lot about, which stands for Chronic Inflammatory Response Syndrome, which can result from biotoxins. Think about water damage and mold. It's so common. But also possibly Lyme disease, fibromyalgia, and stress can cause this too. These things put stress on the mitochondria so that they're always in defense mode where they're trying to detox instead of producing energy like they're supposed to. Um, that's why you may be foggy brain and have no energy. There are ways to repair the mitochondria. Besides removing the source of these toxins, things like bile acid binders and something called vasoactive intestinal peptides, VIP in a spray that I'll talk about in a further podcast. Very interesting. They talked a lot about the benefits of polyphenols, especially the flavonoids. Uh, they talked a lot about the tremendous benefits of vitamin K2 to prevent calcification and so many other things, uh, like activating the NERF2 pathway that um, is an antioxidant pathway that reduces ROS, reactive, reactive oxygen species, that's so important. They talked a lot about mTOR that I talk a lot about. That's the metabolic switch of growth versus repair and how to turn this thing down as you age to decre decrease inflammation. Besides taking rapamycin, which most of the speakers that I personally talk to take, um, there's other ways to do it like intermittent fasting and decreasing sugars, refined sugars and carbohydrates. Um, you need to look at my podcast on rapamycin. Talked a lot about rapamycin. Uh, they, they talked about something called uh, MCAS, mast cell activation syndrome, and histamine intolerance that I mentioned previously. I'm going to do a podcast on these very soon. It's too lengthy for me to talk about right now, but it has a lot to do with inflammation. One supplement that I restarted taking from listening to the benefits of it is sulforaphane uh, for really redox balance. I will do a podcast on that too. Um, there's a really good product that I take for that. Um, they talked a lot about the theories of aging. Is it just wear and tear or hyperfunction? They think hyperfunction. And we'll talk about that later. That leads to cardiovascular disease, cancer, Alzheimer's. Think of inflammation as a body's response to a foreign material. Chronic inflammation is bad. And remember, inflammation drives insulin resistance. A lot of this is about insulin resistance with how you feel, what you weigh, how much energy you have. Um, so this was a good refresher course for me. And I learned a lot of new stuff as well. If you have chronic issues like fatigue, brain fog, 
chronic pain, gut problems, please see a good functional medicine practitioner. Um, I hope this helps you. It opens up the, the avenue to a lot of future podcasts. But I want you to start thinking about inflammation in your body. Always think about the gut. Think about the things you can do to detox uh, and heal because you can feel better. So think about all these things. Future podcasts are coming. Thanks. I'll see you next week. <laughs>